brother Jabe on eight, I was on seven. On six was Auntie Vi. On five was Uncle Danny. Four was Auntie Queen. And on three was Mama. And on two was a mercenary. And on one was my mate. There's me. There's Georgie Gervin. And there is the innocent sinners. confusing and uh, I don't feel human you know and uh, this might have something to do with it I uh, I was in the pub the local pub and this fella kept staring at me and he said uh, and then we got in a fight and I won the fight but then the next week he brings these gangsters over from Notting Hill Gate and they start, uh, they threw a jacket over the top of me and they hit me over the head with bottles and they knocked me to the floor and they all started kicking my face in and even the women joined in at that time too and my brother ran up to stop them and they held a knife right up to his throat like So How does that make you feel?
So uh, I thought, right, you fucking bastard, I'll have you. Oh, he, oh, he had a swear, didn't he? No swearing. Go on, as you were. No that. Lord Mary. I used to no. watch him, and I followed him home one by one, and I got each one of them on the fucking home. But home. did you? You're not telling Paul Price then? No, I've got each one of them on Because you was a pretty scared guy back then. Fun? You was a pretty scared guy back then. I was, I was skinny as well. No, but was you scared back then? Of course I was scared. Well, how can I believe you did three of them? I, not I one at one a time. go, one at a time. But you actually went and got them one at a time. One at a time. A bit like Charles Bronson. Was you a bit of a Charlie, was you? He filled his sock up with one some marbles and went out and whacked yeah. it around his chest. Carried no, no, a chain a with you. One How'd you get them then? With a bit of fibre too. A lump of wood? Yes. Go on, describe it. What actually happened? Any splinters or...? or... No, I just as I walked past, I just whacked them on the fucking back of their neck. Yeah? Yeah. And that would, you did the three of them like that? Each one, yeah. Not a splinter anywhere. Not a splinter. But didn't no. the second one turn around and tell the first one? Or the first one say to the second one, watch out, because Ray's going to hit you around the back with a lump of... Mm, it's been a long too. time, mate. My uh, sister, the next morning, was walking past the pub and uh, the woman was sweeping all my blood down the stairs. And my sister said, what the hell happened? They said, oh! The woman said it was your brother. She said, who, Jimmy? She said, no, no, your other brother. Who, Jamie? She said, no, no, you're Lenny. Oh, it's really bad, she says. So my sister ran up to the barn and grabbed his head, slammed it on the bar and said, you should have stopped it, like that. Anyway, they rushed me off to hospital I got in there and uh, they did all plastic surgery. So I had my new nose put on. How's my nose look? Good? Oh, it's fine. Yeah, so I had my new nose put on. And uh, I went back home and uh, of course I looked like a mummy because I had all the bandages around me head. And uh, I sat there in the kitchen having, trying to have a cup of tea because I couldn't even drink it because of the bandages. and. Uh, she walked in and she screamed because she didn't know who it was, you know. And then I said to young Len, I said, you know, Len, I, uh, I tripped and I hit me head on a lamppost. But I knew he didn't believe me. Shit, do you think you would have cut off their testicles? I'd have cut their fucking head off, mate. See, I haven't sworn See, you months at you nasty. bastard, have I? You was that nasty, Ray, when you was a kid. I didn't dream you was that bad. I thought you was as good as a milk boy. Back then, no, he was never a milk don't, boy. Don't let, don't let my little fresh face, uh, uh, you fresh face, you old looking sod. Anything. What do you mean fresh you face? You old haggard. <laughs> I, was, I was a fucking angry person, mate. You still are. What are you, you still are. No, no, uh, Look at you. You've sure. had 115 pints of lager, and yeah. then you're angry. And you're angry. Uh, uh, you hate the world. I can't hate work them, out why that boat's leaving to one world. side, Lenny. I didn't hate the world. I hated them. You hated them. Because I broke my glasses. All right, well, you've done them in, so oh, it's you out got, of your system now. Oh, you got bashed up again after that, you know, by Peter Mayo. Oh, you Mayer got bashed and, up uh, again? What's his name? Who Colin beat you Duggan. up the second time? Colin Duggan and Peter Mayo. Oh, that was really bad, that was. Was it? What happened? Go on. I went to school with him. Go on. That was really vicious, that was. What happened then? Uh, some silly fuck might have said, uh, have you got a time? Peter Mayo's dead, heart attack. And cool. I said, uh, no, I ain't. And Colin Duggan's a wino, isn't he? And uh, the bloke I was with, this uh, bloke, what was his name? That Robin... Uh, White. Not, uh, Robin Looker, wasn't Looker. he? Looker. Supposed to have been a jiu-jitsu expert. Right. Karate expert, yeah. I asked him, and they, they started jumping on him. Right. So, so Ray went I over went and helped help him. him. And uh, he they started off, on him. He, he ran off to get help for me. He ran off to get help. Yeah. And then what happened? Ray got a good idea. fucking done. Now, did he sock you one of the jaw first? How did he start? He just fucking... Uh, I just went down, mate. I put my hands around the top of my head and uh, pulled up in the bowl and I got bashed yeah. up. Yeah. Terrible oh, bastards. Shouldn't have done That's that. That's because I weren't there. I don't like the way... But how's the nose? Does it look good? It looks fine. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, because I was worried, you know, because uh, I've been trying to sort of pot it up against all the other famous actors and shit and see, you know, how my nose compares. Really, hmm. you know. But uh, anyway, uh, what's really made me angry is, uh, you know, because I've got three kids, and I'm up in the flats, and I went up to this council woman and I said to her, I said, listen, 
you put me in the sky, you can get me out of the sky. And she said, it's not that easy, Leonard. I said, look, I've took three overdoses, and I'll tell you what, the fourth one has your name on it. So, are you going to get me out of the sky? So she gave us three houses to look at, and me and young Len went to check this one out. And in the living room, in the middle, there was a box, and it was full of books. And yet, young Len went up to the box, and he, and he looked in, and he says, Oh, Dad, there's great books, let's take them home. And I said to him, I said, Len, you are home. We're taking this one. Okay? <laughs> And then for me, young Len looks after me because he's the boxer. See, and any time the family wants me to sort someone out, I have to go do it. Because I'm the best fighter in the family. That's, that's why. And young Len is your oldest son. Yes, he's the oldest. And he does everything for me and he looks after me. And, you know, he's, I mean, we used to work together and he used to run my business for me. You know. But when he did, when we did go on the job, sometimes I would get that shortening out in the brain. So I would say to him, I'm not staying. And he would say, come on, Dad, let's get this job done. And I would say, no, I'm not thinking straight. I'm going to go down a club where I feel safe. And, I, and uh, young Len used to say to me, oh, yeah, that's right, just have a good drink. You know, and we've got a whole block of flats to paint. You know, and he was on my case all the time, but my missus always said to him, go with him, otherwise he won't go. And I wouldn't go unless young Len came with me. I wouldn't go to work. I didn't have the confidence. I didn't feel human enough to go. I mean, if you're on a bus and suddenly you're shortening out, where are you going to run? What are you going to do? You know, so this feeling of shortening out uh, can happen at any time and place? I don't know when it's going to happen. It seems, my guess is like once every three days. Yeah, and that's quite a lot if you ask me. Yeah. You know. And you'd like to change this behavior? Well, yeah, but how do I change it? Well... That's what we're going to find out. Oh, good. In so in session. the next session, can we explore all that then? Well, we can explore it, yeah, from right now. Yeah. Because you uh, get an hour. You're yeah, gonna... I've got an hour, that's right. Yeah. yeah, I keep forgetting, sorry. But uh, you're the first one I've ever told any of this to, so uh -huh. we'll keep it a bit stung, you know, all this, because... Uh, you know, it's all my private lifeline. But it does make you feel better to talk about it, doesn't it? Well, yeah, I feel a lot better, but I'm very emotional. I don't feel completely right, you know, about it all. I mean, I shouldn't have took an overdose, but I didn't feel like it was worth being here anymore. And that's happened to you several times. Yeah, it happened to me about three times. And uh, young Len keep talking to me and sort of brought me back a bit. And uh, I didn't want to do it again after that because he kept talking me around, you know. And it was embarrassing a lot because he'd had mates over and all that. And I, I didn't speak for about six years. I just sat there for six years like a zombie because they had me on so many drugs. I didn't know where I was. Valium was one of them, though. And uh, I just didn't know where I was. They drugged me up so much. And on top of that, I used to escape and take the train down to the club, which was five stops. And then I had about a good half a mile to a mile to walk to the club. And once I got to the club, I actually felt safe. 
but walking now was extremely nervous, you know. And uh, I've never shared this with anybody. I, uh, I, I, I always thought things would get worse, you know. And uh, they said that I might have to be put away in a nut house, you know. So if you do, you do, you know. I mean, I was worried that I might, you know, attack the family or do something wrong, you know. I was worried, more panicked about that. You think you might direct these actions at your own family? Well, it's the last thing I want to do, but the thing is, I, I might just do something crazy like that, because they, young Len stopped me one night, I was strangling the missus, and young Len burst in, and I stopped, and I woke up, and I was all right. But when she screamed, I never stopped. I only stopped because young Len was in. See? And it's happened about two or three times, this. And she keeps saying I'm attacking her, but I can't remember attacking her. You know? But she stays with you. She stuck with me all through it. And I'll tell you another thing. When I worked for Sanderson's, that's when she left me, because uh, I, I actually cheated with a girl underneath. And, uh... You mean in a downstairs apartment? Yeah, in a yeah. downstairs apartment. I cheated with old June, and, uh... She found out, and she went to her mum's with the kids, and young Len would follow me there. And I knew he was following me, because I saw him hiding behind the walls. And he followed me there to Nan's, and we went to see her at Nan's, and she was hiding there. And, you know, the old granddad come out and I said to the granddad, move out my way, I want to talk to her. Anyway, they wouldn't let me in. And one of her sisters says, don't you hit him. Well, he was the old granddad, I wasn't going to hit him anyway. You know, but young Len must have scooted back home because I didn't see him on the way home. And then he knocked on the door. And when he knocked on the door, I said, uh, go on, piss off with your mother. I said, and then he just walked in the, the house behind me, and that was it. I'll drive as slow as the fucking I want, mate. It's Sunday afternoon. Pass in this lane, Johnny. Rude fuckers, mate. Rude. And young Len come rushing to the hospital and knocked all the nurses out of the way because they didn't, they wouldn't let him see me. And I felt a bit of an idiot because I was actually flirting with the nurse at the time and he was panicked. And when young Len come up to me, I said to him, I said, Len, here, I couldn't swallow the pills. I couldn't swallow them. See? Anyway, he was a good boy, he looked after me like, you know. But young Len was a boxer and he, uh, he had a lot of fights, and uh, he had this fight with his black fella. He had a big chest on him, big arms, and I thought, oh, Lenny don't stand a chance. Anyway, it was punch for punch. But the most embarrassing part of the whole thing was Uncle Jay. He shouts out, hit him up the kitty cat, hit him up the kitty cat. Well, the whole place was embarrassed by that. I even think young Len was. Of course, he probably took no notice because he was battling it out, you know. Anyway, young Len ended up winning the fight. We were all over the moon. But the Black family was sitting down the front and he's been shouting out all night, hit him up the kitty cat. So we all thought we were going to get in a big fight with this Black family. Well, they came over to young Len and they shook his hand and congratulated him on the win. Well, I couldn't believe it. What is your piece? Up the kitty cat. That's a, a, an expression I haven't heard before. And, uh, being American, uh, you might have to explain that to me. Uh, what does that actually mean? I know that you felt he was making fun of the young letter, but uh, what does it actually mean, up the kitty cat? 
and then he would reply and tell the thing. You certainly have a, some uh, colorful expressions, Leonard. You, you, you were on the, how did you say that? You, you took the lamb. And it was obvious what it meant. You, but I, I'm always surprised by it. English that's not American. So uh, it would take me a while to learn it. I've only been in the country a few months, you know. But we'll both learn from these uh, meetings we're having. And I promise you things will get better. He is eating me away, Doc. It's this, it's this little tiny rat. He's right inside me and he's gnawing away. I can feel him. I can feel him working away in there, gnawing away. He's taking bits of me away, Doc. Because you know, I've got the big C, you know. No. I've got the big C. What, what is your primary care physician? Oh, I don't care about him, Doc. I'm not worried about him. I just want to get rid of the pain. Have you got anything for the pain, Doc? Anything to do? Well... Anything to do, please. All oh. right, I, I promise you. Oh. That just couldn't happen. I don't have any way to do that, so... This will... Uh, oh. This will last us several hours, at least. Oh, will it? Oh, anything to help, Doc, honestly. Uh. So, how long have you been having these attacks? Well, let me tell you, I was down in the club. I was enjoying myself with everyone down there. We was all, like, you know, having a nice beer with a scotch chaser and all that, really enjoying ourselves. And I felt wonderful. I felt young again. I felt really good. And I got home, and suddenly he started up again. He started eating me again. He's gnawing away. He's taking bits out of me. So he's he this rat has done this before. Yeah, there's only certain days that he, he he starts working, and I can feel him working in there. Yeah, but how long is it since you've known about this rat? It's uh, oh shoot, it's been oh about six weeks, something like that, I suppose. And you did go to your primary care doctor. Oh, I don't care about him. He's no bloody good. Honestly, he's useless. He won't even give me a pill for it. And then, you know, I've got malignant cancer. Yeah. So, that doctor's given me nine months to live. Yeah, how long? Nine, nine. Mu nine to 18 months, yeah. he said. So you're stage four. Well, whatever you want to call it. I mean, that's what I am. You know, and uh, it's, uh, you know, I just got to get out of the pain for now. And Future uh, out there, mate. I'm not fucking thick, am I? I can do it. I can do something. I can make a difference in this fucking world. But I haven't so far, have I? I've been a fuck up, mate. Why? Because I sit around fucking drinking and smoking all fucking day and picking my nose and watching the television, just like the rest of the fucking world, right, yeah? Well, wow, it's me fucking background, what can I say, mate? You fucking go off to your roots at the end of the day, don't you, mate? Yeah, that's fucking right. You don't think you can get away with it, right, God? Am I fucking right? I know I always swear, mate, but I'm angry. Well, I'm angry when I fucking swear. I don't normally swear, I'm a nice guy, you know? What's that? Okay. Oh, fucking no, I'm not gonna get a job, am I? Who's gonna give me a job, God? I, I don't know what to tell you, mate. It's, it, look, it's as bad as cancer can get. And it's gone as far as it can go. Now, they did say that I had this for 25 years in one lung. And that's, and that's why I've been wheezing, like I've been wheezing for 25 years. But I didn't know it was in one lung. But they said it's attacked your lung and it's closed your lung completely off, they said. So that's what's crushing me right now. And that one lung is the rat gnawing away at me. You see? Oh, and a tax man got me too. And he, uh, he's done me for three and a half grand. And uh, uh, the, 
the, the bookkeeper, the accountant, run off with the book so I can't even get him. Three and a half grand. How about that? Well, how does that make you feel? Well, I shouldn't worry about it really, should I? I mean, well, it the state be... I'm in. I'm sorry? The state I'm in, I shouldn't worry about the tax man, should I? Well, probably not. I just have other priorities. Yeah? We're in your shoes. Yeah. All right. Although that pill seems to work a little bit now. Well, the same. pain's starting to go a little bit. Yeah. You know? If you take it more often, maybe you wouldn't have the problem. You're just stubborn. Have you got any more than pills, though? Yes, I, I have to arrange for a prescription. I, I... Oh, you could get over that shit. You could go f through all that and get me a few more, couldn't you? Yes, but uh, what has to be written out, and uh, I can't be, it's just the law, it's just things I have to comply with. Yeah. I'm a licensed physician. Oh, yeah, I understand. It's just, and it's starting to feel before better. Before this is worn off, or you'll have a prescription. Okay, good. But he probably won't take it. He says he wants it, it's always on the table, I'll, under the bed. I think I'll take it, though. Huh. I'm starting to feel better. It, it, it don't hurt so much now. It's sort of not going well, on. That's the pain anyway. It's morphine, so. Oh, good. It's about the strongest thing that I could give you. Is that all I can take? Is morphine? No, you could take other things. You should take a, a, a pain management thing that actually works for you because people are different in the way we react to pain. It may work better for you than some other substance. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, it's, it, it, it's gone all numb on me at the moment, so I feel a lot better. Yeah, that's what it does. Yeah, it's, uh, it, I think it's starting to work. I can't feel it anymore. You know, I think, oh, I'm starting to feel a lot better now. And you know, every time I stand up, I drop to the floor. You know that? Yeah, well, why don't you just sit down for a while? Because uh, with the cancer, I'll get very dizzy. Oh, and I wanted to tell you something that my friend, I'm knackered. My friend that had the same cancer, he went for that chemo and that radiation stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he says, Look, Len, what it is is. When you go through the chemo, he said, you're in this dark tunnel and you can see the, the little light at the other end. But it actually takes you months to get there. He said, so you're in that darkness for months through the chemo, he said. Well, I didn't have chemo, I didn't have radiation, I refused to have all of it because it's malignant. It's gone too far anyway, so even if I had all that, it's not going to do me any good, is it? Well, it can extend your life. feeling sorry for myself, I'm being realistic now, Doc. Mm. You know, I've done it all. I'm not going to do any more. I'm just going to sit there in the same chair. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm not going down the club anymore. I'm not, I'm not going to see the family. I mean, it's my last days. I think I'm ready to go, you know? And I... I I don't want to go anywhere because I think it's a cruel world. I think 
the will. I never took the family out because if I took the kids out, yeah. something might have happened to them. And then I'm responsible and I don't think I could handle that. Well, what kind of things would happen to them? Well, you tell me. I mean, I, I wouldn't have a clue what to do with them. I would panic. So that's why all their lives I never took them anywhere. See? That's a funny way to look at things. Well, how did that make you feel? How the fuck does it make me feel? Oh, God. Um, I just felt useless, to tell you the truth, Doc. You know, I really did. I just, I felt no good to the family, but, you know, with all them uh, triggers in my brain that kept shutting my brain off, I just didn't think I would take the gamble of, on the family, like, yeah. you know. So, so being with my missus, my feet never touched the ground. 36 years. It was wonderful. I have no complaints whatsoever. None at all. Well, to be congratulated on that, I suppose. It doesn't happen to too many of us, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, there's another thing I wanted to tell you, Doc, that when I was painting in the West End, when I was working in the West End painting away, I was on my way home and I walked past this train station and there was a, a, a paper stand with a man selling the papers. Yeah. And on the paper stand itself, it said, man falls 60 feet. So I saw it, I got the bus home, took the bus home. When I got home, I found out the man that fell 60 foot was my brother-in-law. Hmm. And so, uh, he was severely injured or? Stone worse? dead. Oh. He was a demolition man. He was what they called a top man. And he was knocking the bricks off the top. And I don't know how he fell, yeah. but when they came back from lunch, he was sitting inside the building, because it had an open roof, yeah. and when he's sitting there, he's broke every single bone in his body, stone dead sitting there on the, on the floor there, inside the building. Huh, scary. Yeah. Very scary. Oh, boy. Boy. So were you close to your brother-in-law? We used to go drinking together. I mean, yeah. my sister never got on with him. I mean, it was always fine. I had to beat him up a couple of times, you know, because what he'd done to the sister and all that. But she he was, was a good friends. fella. I liked yeah. him. I really liked him, you know. But, uh, you know, Doc, I've totally forgotten why I ever started coming to you. I, I guess that means I'm cured, right? I mean, whatever it was, it must not be bothering me anymore. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure you've just repressed it uh, from your memory and, uh, you know, kind of put it into a place uh, where it can't hurt you, so you think. But listen, with just, I'm sure, with just one extra session a week, we could tackle this problem together. All right. You know, Doc, I'm gonna miss you, mate. Yeah, okay. well. Leonard died aged 55. He lasted nine months. In the dark corridors of your mind, you hear them speak. You know, I drove that train home drunk. Never kick a gift horse in the mouth. 